what is going on collective welcome back to my channel it's your boy adam raw like comment share subscribe um okay so so far we talked about the uh, last couple of videos it was uh first the law of uh mentalism all is mind mind is all then you have two law of correspondence and how everything has an equal and opposite you know how everything has an opposite how it leads to and from its opposite the you know relationship right then you have uh vibrations how everything is alive right then we have the law of gender how everything is masculine and feminine in nature now aside from that today we're going to talk about the law of polarity although the law of polarity is essentially you know the almost the same as gender that's what we're going to talk about today how the law of polarity is different than just gender because in general when we think about polarity, we think about, let's say, um, positive and negative, essentially, right? Whereas when it comes to um, polarity, essentially, this is what, what we pretty much feed off on. You got the positive aspect here and you have the negative aspect here, right? This aspect of the polarity has to do with, let's say, positivity or um procreation right this side over here has to do more with uh negativity well not really negativity but it has to do with the negative aspect or the absence of but instead of procreation we have the energy of receptivity remember a moment ago i talked i mean in the previous video i talked about one of the rules of god right The, one of the rules of Godsmanship is this. One, you must have a creator. Two, you must have someone receptive to that creation. Ugh. My hands were screwed up a lot. So anyway, um, essentially, this is one of the rules of God. So... Basically, it goes back to the, um, what was that? Um, it's a, 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 a paradox, right? Because all God, most of the rules of Godsmanship breaks down to paradoxes, essentially is what happens, right? So there is this one paradox that says, okay, if, let's say that, you created this beautiful world, right? It is the most beautiful world that could ever be created. Say that God created the most beautiful world, a world beyond your perception of what beauty could be. It's very peaceful. It's very harmonious. It's very like a paradise in every sense of the word, a paradise, right? The question is, does that paradise truly exist if no one has ever seen it, witnessed it, or even capable of perceiving it? Does it truly exist? You see what I'm saying? And essentially, that's the way polarity works. Now, that's why you have polarity. You have one aspect that creates in the universe. It's the creative force. It's the creative aspect. It's it's the uh, adding the utilization of energy in a proactive way so that our so that we can perceive it right. And then you have the negative aspect of it, or the absent or the receptivity aspect of it, right? With the receptivity aspect of it, it's twofold here. One is through perception. In this perception, we perceive something that is abstract. And then it gives us the ability to procreate it into the world, right? Now, in the other aspect of receptivity, it is the aspect of perception in which we are observing. We are in observance to something that has already been procreated from this world. So essentially, it's like this. There's receptivity. 
And this receptivity leads into creativity. Right? And then this creativity leads back into receptivity. And vice versa. And the reason being is because when you, before you can create, you have to be receptive to something. It requires receptivity. So you have to draw on this receptivity in order to create. And then with this creativity, once you create it, or if somebody else creates it, you have to be, you know, let's say like um, you already created it or whatever. Now, in order for it to be considered a creation, you need the energy of this create this receptivity from either, you know, from others or yourself or whatever it may be. So it's a it's a never ending loop that goes to and from each other. So essentially this concept that, you know, and I had to get to this point to explain that this concept of this infinite loop is also wrong. This is not how the universe acts either. Essentially with the universe, it's twofold. OK. It's just like having arteries and veins in the universe, right? Let's say this is the heart of the matter, right? The heart of the matter itself, we're going to give it a name and it's going to be polarity. That's the heart of the man. That's the heart of the situation in itself. Now, the artery of polarity in this circumstance would be what? Creativity. and receptivity. I mean, cre yeah, creativity and receptivity, right? That's the, that's the artery, right? But in this artery, it's flowing from re receptivity into creativity, and then from creativity back into receptivity. If that makes any sense. So essentially, the loop is going from this eye to this side and back. So it's going here, 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 right? That's the artery. Now let's look at the vein. The vein operates in the same exact way, only it's the opposite. You see what I'm saying? So now you have two loops that are on top of each other. And when you look in chemistry, essentially what happens is when you have one nucleus, right? and you have multiple shells, those shells flow to just like that and this way, just like that. You got four aspects that are connected in this manner. And that's essentially what polarity is because now you have, let's say if the, what we're trying to polarize is right here in the center is the, is the nucleus. So let's say if we were to polarize gender, right? So this nucleus, would represent gender, gender in itself, because that's the overall energy, right? This top part of it, I mean, this left side of the gender is going to be positive and the right side is going to be negative, right? This right here is going to be a positive masculine energy. This energy right here is going to be that negative masculine energy. What is the difference? This masculine energy is procreates this energy creates uh, destruction, chaos. Neither one of them are, neither one of them are um, strong. I mean, neither one of them are less important than the other. Whether you create, whether you procreate or you destroy because they feed into one another. And let's think of the universe as like a cup, right? In order to keep that universe... <gasps> from overflowing and this is what anything in nature to keep things from overflowing something has to be destroyed right that's why in order to keep things in the universe to keep it from just flowing out you have this rule with energy where it can be broken down but it can't be destroyed so what does it do it reforms itself into a new idea and recreates itself you see what i'm saying but anyway, you have the positive masculine energy that choose to create to be, you know, for that creation. Then you have the negative right here to create um, chaos, destruction, because this chaotic energy, this destruction is what's going to make space for this positive masculine energy to create. Right. And then on this aspect, you have the positive feminine 
we these are the uh I, these are the ideas of being receptive to other people's creations right that positive feminine energy is receptive to other people's creations, receptive to creations that are already, that comes from others, okay? And then you have the negative feminine uh, feminine energy where you're receptive to only, you're, 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 in, you're inside of yourself and you are tapping into that energy inside yourself to reach for ideas. Essentially, you know, we think of ideas as coming outside of ourselves. And it's true. But it comes from being in isolation and from being to uh, from um, isolating ourselves from the world. If you pay attention, most of the geniuses in this in our world tend to have the best ideas when they are isolated. And that's where this comes from, this negative feminine energy. Where essentially it's like the dark night of the soul. They say when you are in the darkest of the the darkest part of your life reveals the mo the strongest lights. Okay, so essentially that's what this is. This is the negative aspect of feminine energy. And just because you're a man doesn't mean you're not going to have masculine energy. And just because you're a female doesn't mean you're going to have you're only going to have feminine energy. No, it's all about what where you are at that point, right? So essentially, the reason why I put it at the crossroad like this to to monitor, I mean, to mimic like uh, chemistry, right, is because on this on this octave, right, right here, this octave right here, this is one octave and then this is a separate octave on this octave here. You have the positive masculine feeding into the negative feminine and back with this. The masculine is creating what is in that person's own mind, essentially what this represents, the creation from your own mind, right? With this right here, you are creating or utilizing what others create to either destroy it, break it down. You're breaking down old orders with this other energy here, right? With the other octave. It's the breaking down of energy because this right here has to do with being receptive to what other people has already created. And essentially what happens is that we as people, we know that when you cease to evolve or you start to die out, the moment you start, you stop evolving is the moment that you stop, start to die in order for us to evolve. There are some things that must come to an end and old inventions come to an end. That's just like, the the use of horses came to an end the moment that cars was invented. You see what I'm saying? The ridding of using horses to get around, and I'm not saying completely, but the, the when we got rid of the system of relying on horses, that's when, uh, that's around the time that the creation of the car came around. You see what I'm saying? The destruction, the death of one thing to create life for another. Right. And essentially, that's a part of what polarity is. It's about the cosmic cup. Right. Forever filling and emptying itself at the same time. In various ways. And I'm not saying this is the only way that this works, because essentially what happens here. Is that, you know, um, well, I'll save that for later. Uh, a later uh, explanation because it's not relevant at this point. So when the law of pol uh, polarity comes into play, it's like this. Think of polarity as like being a magnet, right? We are all magnetized. Everything in our life is electromagnetic, right? Our, our, um, the inner, the, our energy fields around us is electromagnetic. Um, plants have electromagnetic uh, fields. Animals have electromagnetic fields. Um, let's say uh, cell different, you know, cells have electromagnetic shield fields. The earth itself has electromagnetic fields, right? Now, this is the thing when it comes to polarity. Whatever you align yourself with is what you're going to magne magnetically attract to yourself. Why? Because of the law of how uh, pos uh, because of the law that I just explained to you about masculine and feminine. You see what I'm saying? When you align yourself up with a certain energy, it naturally draw you create a channel for it to draw itself into your life.
essentially is what happens because you are procreating that channel and you're also being receptive to that channel at the same time so that's why it's important to keeping you know to have pay attention to what you think of pay attention to what you do because a part of this hermeticism is this in the law of hermeticism there's a law i mean there's a, the, a concept that all um initiates have to understand and it's when it comes to the law of mentalism let's go back to mentalism the rule behind this is that what you think becomes what you talk about what you talk about leads you to what you do what you do leads you to your habits. And your habits is what's going to define who you are as a person, a character. Think, talk, do, habits, character. You see what I'm saying? So essentially, these are the steps to how polarity essentially work. Now, with polarity, just because you are thinking a certain kind of way, we have that thought process where when it comes to thought, there's more than just one way of thinking. There's uh, beliefs. There's morals. There's values. Thoughts can be both um, acute and chronic, right? You got acute, you got acute thoughts and you have chronic thoughts, right? With it being acute and chronic, essentially what happens is you have to pay attention to those acute thoughts because reoccurring acute thoughts can become chronic thoughts and those chronic thoughts affect your beliefs. It affects your morals. It affects your values. It affects your behavior overall. And then you begin to talk about it. Then you start doing things that you don't normally do. Then you start creating habits of those things and you start developing your character into something that you wouldn't ordinarily be. So the law of polarity ties and it, it's very powerful is it ties a lot of all the other energies together. You know what I mean? Because it uses like the law of vibration, whereas, you know, and the reason why I'm drawing this is to simulate that law of vibration with polarity. When you start, let's say that it's a pendulum. Right. You got the pendulum this way and you got the pendulum that way. Right. And you have this pendulum in the center. This is you being balanced with no uh, stimulus, right? But as you know, in our universe, we're always um, we're always subjected to stimuluses, right? Now, when you are overly stimulated to this side, it has a consequence. When you are overly stimulated to this side, it has a consequence. Striding in the middle, essentially, it has a consequence too. You see? So, yeah, essentially with the law of polarity, it's it plays an important role in hermeticism. And when you decide to start doing whatever it is you choose to do in life, you will understand that once it's just like, you know, how people become masters in the universe uh, or masters at their craft. This is how this is the law that people use to become masters. They polarize themselves to understanding a craft. And once they polarize themselves to understanding a certain craft, guess what? It begins to reveal its secrets to them in a manner where they are able to um, understand all the wisdoms behind the circumstance situation. I'm sorry, I have to let this truck pass. The best way to be a master at anything in your in this world is to be consumed by it because everything is a spirit. Everything has a spirit to it. Just like we talk about the spirit of Christmas, right? With the spirit of Christmas, we are consumed with trees. We are consumed with lights and the, you know what I'm saying? Our moods generally are a lot lighter there. Same with our craft, same with our with mastering of certain things in life. When you want to master something in life, you have to be consumed by it. You have to allow it to consume you 
You have to become like a child. And that's the reason why Jesus Christ, um, he, you know, now I'm not going to say value the child over, you know, others. But he said in order to get into the kingdom, you have to be like a child. That childlike energy means you have to be receptive. You see what I'm saying? It's about receptivity over all things. When you learn to be receptive to the things that you want to develop or create or master in your life, then you'll become that master. And by the time you become the master, you'll realize that you were nothing but the student. You're nothing more than just a seasoned student. Because there's going to be something more for you to learn, something more for you to, you know, once you master something, another part of mastering something, which is learning, is unlearning. Just as important it is to learn something, it is also important to unlearn something. Those who end up making it big in life, it's not from what they learn. It's not from what they know. If you pay attention, most billionaires and stuff, it's never from what they know. They get paid based off of what they don't know. Take, for example, um, Elon Musk. When he first started his business, he was he he dominated a business that nobody was really going to take over because every nobody wanted books. You know, books. I mean, people wrote books. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, people still struggle with getting their life out. You know, he capitalized on people wanting to be known for something bigger than what they were. He capitalized on that in a time where no one, everyone had moved on from that old archaic technology. It was a dying field, but somehow he found a way to take that and he helped people publish their books. And from there, he got into fields that he had no expertise on. So everything he learned about publishing books, what did he do? He unlearned everything he learned. He knew about publishing books, right? And then from there, he went on to create, let's say, um, what's that? Tesla? Is that right? Tesla? Tesla Corporation? He went on to do that. And then from there, you got SpaceX, right? Because essentially, that's needed. And I'm going to tell you why SpaceX is probably the most important program that we have in the world right now it's not because of going out into space it's because when you have a certain amount of money and you have the capability of going into space you finally it's like you're privatizing what you what you create in space so although most governments have access to resources and information and and um you know money and stuff like that to go into space it's nothing new but there's still rules that they have to follow once they get into space like there's certain they can't create weapons they can't do certain stuff because it violates treaties and pacts with other countries however if you are privatized you are free to create whatever it is you choose to create. They can even pass along wisdom to these private companies to create certain things, you know, whisper in their ears, to create certain things that they are not allowed to create. And that way, when the patent comes out, they are able to, you know, low-key use it without actually being the creator behind it. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's why, that's essentially what the spirit of polarity is about. It's about learning and unlearning. It's about m being magnetized towards a certain polarity in life. And you don't all, and just because you're magnetized to a polarity, doesn't mean you're going to stay there forever. Why? Because everything in life moves. Nothing stays still. So, yeah, it's natural. In order to get to wealth, you have to go through debt. In order to get, you know, to wisdom, you have to go through idiot, 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 being an idiot or being a fool or being receptive or being what? Like a child. You see what I'm saying? So everything is all interconnected. There's nothing that is devoid of one another. Although things appear to be opposites, essentially it's more like they're brothers and sisters. They work together. Because the presence of debt is, well, I say the presence of wealth is also the absence of death. Debt. Uh, debt. You see what I'm saying? You could pray for wealth or you could pray for the absence of death, debt, uh, debt. You see what I'm saying? Those are two different things, but they lead to and fro one another. This is what polarity teaches us. 
It's all about how you polarize your energy. So essentially, for those of you who are experiencing, let's say, spiritual warfare, your enemy may be asking for one thing, right? That one thing may have something else connected to it, right? But because there's two, for every one thing that they ask for, there's two ways to disannul each of those things that they create. Because what they're asking for is the presence of something. Essentially. You see? Presence. Or absence. The absence of one thing creates the presence for another. The presence of one thing creates the absence for another. It's all interconnected, all interlocked. Those who understand, understand. But those who only see the surface value of it will only see the surface value of it. And that's all it's supposed to be. Right? That's all I got for today. All right. I love y'all all. I'll take y'all out. Uh, boof. Love y'all all. Take it easy. And uh, my next video is going, well, I think I'm going to do the next two videos together just because of how long it took me. Peace.